What's up everyone, how's it going? This is Waj. Hope you guys are all doing well. And as you can see, no glasses. Sorry, I kind of broke them last week and I'm gonna either get them fixed or uh, get a new pair. Uh, but in the meantime, let's talk about the Ryzen 7 2700X. We reviewed it a couple of months back. I want to make a PC uh, around the CPU and uh, we finally got a chance to do it a couple of weeks ago. And the budget for the system is actually gonna be uh, pretty decent just under $3,000. We're gonna have a couple of cool, unique parts that I'm sure you guys will find interesting, especially uh, the case. So without any further ado, if you're in the market for a, a new kind of high-end gaming slash productivity rig, might be interested in what I come up with. So let's get right into it. Now, before we talk about some of the other components, one of the most critical factors about building a PC is making sure that you don't overlook the power supply. It's a really an important piece of kit, especially if you want to keep something for a long time. Now, in my opinion, I think probably one of the best power supply companies out there definitely has to be Seasonic. I've actually had a 500 watt PSU for over 12 years. Uh, it runs pretty much on a daily basis. I've never had one issue with it. Now, they just came out with the Focus Plus series of PSUs. We have the 850FX Gold. This is fully modular. It has 80 plus gold certification, 10 year warranty, as well as something I haven't encountered before, which is a fan controller option, which uh, will put the PSU in three different modes fanless silent and cooling mode so this is definitely something I'm gonna be trying out as I start testing this thing now moving on let's talk about the case that we're gonna be using for this thing which is kind of extravagant to say the least it's the cooler master cosmos c700p this is an extended ATX case it's probably one of the biggest most expensive most extravagant PC cases that I have ever worked with I was always intrigued uh, to actually build with this thing uh, the the moment that I first uh, encountered it and I finally got my hands on it and this is kind of an opportunity for me to do a build in it and I think it looks absolutely sensational. Uh, there's uh, plenty of downsides to it. Firstly, it's kind of impractical in terms of how large it is, how heavy it is. Uh, I think even without any components, it weighs around 65, 70 pounds. So with a full on PC, it'll probably weigh as much as, you know, your average person. So it's going to be incredible to see what, how everything will come together. In this case, you have tons of options in terms of water cooling, air cooling, whichever route you want to take. Uh, so uh, let's see how our uh, cooler is going to fit into this which is also from cooler master it's the new master liquid ml 240r it is an all-in-one system so it's going to be relatively easy to put together and it's going to be fully compatible with our amd uh, cpu that we're going to be using which i mentioned before is the new ryzen 7 2700x now, nobody needs really an introduction to the CPU. You probably already know it's an eight core chip with 16 threads, can turbo up to 4.3 gigahertz. We'll mess with some overclocking later on in the future, but the initial test is just gonna be at stock frequencies uh, with our cooling configuration. Now, in terms of RAM, we're using 32 gigabytes of assorted crucial memory DDR4, uh, clocked around 3000 megahertz. And as you can see, there's no cooling heat sinks attached to the memory. So we're actually going to be using some third party RGB heat sinks. Uh, this is actually from Up Memory. It's a very kind of cheap, affordable solution for getting RGB lighting into your uh, rig without spending, again, a lot of money. There's no real configuration in terms of how you can set the RGBs. It's basically uh, just something you supply power to each module and they pretty much cycle through a couple of different configurations and different different lighting uh, patterns and schemes. Uh, but they only cost about $9 uh, per actual module unit. And for all four of them is under $40. So pretty affordable, but there are some downsides that we're gonna talk about as we get on building uh, this PC. Now uh, I'm gonna be doing some uh, game streaming as well as some 4K live capture. So I'm gonna choose the Elgato 4K 60 Pro. This is an internal PCI Express capture card. One of the only real solutions to capture native of 4k uh, inside your pc for live streaming or for general game capture perfect if you have an xbox one x or a ps4 pro or anything that you want to record live 4k with uh, we have a review up on the channel you can click on the card or in the description to go to that video now in terms of storage i want something simple and fast i don't need a whole lot of capacity so this will actually do pretty well it's the corsair 4 series mp500 m.2 pci express 
drive, 500 gigabyte capacity, and pretty good read and write sequential performance. So if I want to add any kind of mechanical hard drives, I can do that. But for the most part, I'm going to be sticking with this and just storing any kind of long-term large files on my network attached storage. Now, in terms of GPU, I'm going to be going with the Gigabyte GTX 1080 Ti. This is the Eros edition. And uh, this is still one of the fastest single GPUs that you can get out there. And this is what I'm going to stick with. Uh, until I get another GTX 1080 Ti so I can put an SLI configuration. For the time being, this is going to be perfectly fine for my uh, gaming and my kind of video editing needs. Now, in terms of motherboard, I'm going to be using the X470 Eros Gaming 7 Wi-Fi from Gigabyte. Great overall option, plenty of ports and connectivity for anything that we're going to do from now until a couple of years at least. And it's going to be a great foundation uh, to start our productivity slash gaming rig with. Now, if we were to tally up the total for all this goodness, we're just looking at just under $3,000 about a 2940 without the operating system. Now in terms of uh, building this PC, it was a relatively simple and straightforward process. The only kind of challenge was moving the huge Cosmos C700P case from side to side since it weighs almost 70 pounds. And as you can see, what's absolutely hilarious is how small a standard ATX board looks like inside of this thing that's kind of designed for extended ATX uh, motherboards, which is kind of hard to come by and not too popular. Uh, the these days, uh, but still, uh, I think Cooler Master wanted to go kind of over the top with this case, and that's certainly uh, going to be uh, the uh, result of having all these crazy features and this massive size. But I think it still looks pretty good, uh, really simple and straightforward. Plenty of ports and connectivity options for third party RGB lighting controllers and everything at the back. Cable management is also relatively good, as you would expect from a large format case. The only major gripe I have is with the large uh, glass doors that you have on the case. Uh, they're stuck on by these adhesive hinges and sometimes the, uh, the adhesive backing can uh, come off due to weather changes and things like that. So just be careful of that. But they're relatively strong and sturdy once they're in place and they look super, super sleek. Now in terms of my experience dealing with the up here RGB lighting heat sinks, uh, I did find that one of them did have a disconnected solder connection, I believe on the positive or negative end. And uh, I did have to resolder that into place so the wires are a little bit flimsy they're also a little bit hard to hide the wires uh, since uh, you're going to have to connect them individually to a power supply or daisy chain them somehow so it's a little bit uh, tricky to hide that to make the actual modules look a little bit neater i would probably recommend for people who are interested in ram rgb lighting to get an integrated solution but this was kind of a fun experiment and in terms of the look of them themselves they pretty much cycle through different random color configurations so there's not much customization options, but I think uh, overall uh, this uh, setup is uh, definitely a little bit more gimmicky than anything else. In terms of uh, the RGB lighting system integrated into the Cooler Master case, cooling system, and indeed the motherboard, it's fully customizable. Uh, the case has some pretty sleek RGB lighting strips that is actually controllable on the uh, top uh, control panel itself, which is nice and convenient, or you could do it within software to have everything kind of synced up. So you can actually make this look really, really incredible in combination with everything else you're using. Now, last but not least, I'm going to just throw up uh, some rough benchmarks for the CPU, SSD, as well as uh, some of the general kind of productivity and gaming performance that I encountered. So you guys have just a rough idea in terms of how this PC actually performs. And I'll meet you back in a little bit. Now, in terms of cost efficiency, I would be the first to admit that uh, $3,000 is certainly kind of uh, too much for a system with these kind of specifications and this certain performance. Uh, certainly, one of the biggest factor has to be uh, the case that we use. I kind of threw in uh, the uh, Cosmos C700P because I wanted to, to build around it, and this was kind of a good excuse for me to do so. But if you want to save... $300, I would definitely opt to get a, a, a kind of a regular case. You can kind of go with anything you like, but this was kind of my choice. And I'm a huge fan of the case itself. I think uh, certainly it's still a stretch uh, for the amount uh, that's being offered, but it's a limited edition case. Uh, it's uh, a pretty uh, amazing in terms of overall build quality and aesthetics, especially if you like the aesthetics. And I'm going to stick with it uh, for the time being. I uh, definitely love to hear your thoughts about the system overall. Certainly it looks really, really cool. 
cool in my opinion. And uh, we're going to have an updated uh, kind of a version of our budget uh, based uh, gaming series in a little bit. I'm going to do uh, something that I haven't done before. So we're basically going to pair up uh, a, a used kind of Craigslist configuration gaming PC setup versus something you can get brand new out of the box. And we're going to see the differences between uh, two of uh, those styles of PC. So if you're interested in a video like that, definitely let me know and I'll get cracking right on to it. I'm actually kind of working on it as we speak. Uh, so definitely love to hear your thoughts in the time being. Give us a thumbs up if you like this video. Thanks for your support. Thanks for watching. I'll see you.